Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It has been a minute, I will admit that. In today's video, I want to show you how I like to curl my hair. I have it down to the method that I like that gives me the most volume. I definitely know everybody has their own way of curling their hair and it is absolutely insane to me how many different ways you can curl hair. Also, how many different speeds. Today, I'm gonna be using a curling wand, not a curling iron eye. I don't really mess with those. I'm not very, very good at them. So this is the one that I have. It is the bed head. It does not have any heat settings on it. Um, if yours is like this, I would recommend getting a new one, but I'm just gonna use what I have. So this is the bed head TG1. It literally just has on and off, straight on and off button, nothing else. No heat controls, whatever. It is risky. Do I know how hot it gets? No, should I? Yes, but I just hold it for a few seconds and pray everything goes good. But anyway, this is a curling iron that I'm going to be using today. So for the heat protector, I use the Heritage by Mindy McKnight. This one you can find it at Walmart. This is one I use. It's got a little mock on it so that you can. And then sometimes I use mousse and I literally just use a cheap one from like the dollar store Walmart as well. Oh, uh, this one's the Herbal Essence. It's the, the berry one. And this one is my favorite one by far. I've only used like two, but I like this one better. The last two things we need are a brush and a claw clip. This is so that I can section out my hair. If you don't want to section your hair the way I do, because you might have longer hair, it might just hold in place, then you don't need a claw clip. But I like to use a claw clip and then obviously a brush. Sometimes I like to use hairspray before, but most of the time I put it on after. This is the kind I use. It is extra hold hairspray by, I don't know how to say it, but... This is what it looks like um, if you want to use it. This is another one I have. This one I just got at the dollar store. This one's basically gone. I just upgraded. So if you can't find this one, this one works just as well. Uh, this one, I think this one makes my hair tangle more than this one, but uh, it's been a while since I've used this one. So if you can't find this one, this one definitely works too. Even if you don't have either of these, just like a cheap one or no hairspray, if you don't want to put any product in your hair, that's fine at all. I would just still try and use some sort of heat protector. Okay, so I know that some people like to do it sitting at a desk, some people like to do it standing up. I have a mirror on my door and I like to kneel on the ground and just reach for my curling iron right here. Everybody does it different, but this is how I like to do it. So while I wait for it to heat up, it doesn't take long at all, I'm going to put some heat protector in my hair. What I like to do first, do my best to explain this. So I'm gonna start by right above my ears and I'm gonna just make a straight line, just right back, and pull all of that hair down. And then I'm going to twist all of this hair up, take a claw clip, and stick it in. It holds like that. And I'm gonna do mine a little tighter. And once I have that in, this heat protector, I just used to spray it, but I realized I need to put it in my hand, rub it around, and then put it in my hair like a mousse or something because it just does a straight fire so it doesn't really do anything if I do it the other way. I always keep a towel <laughs> next to me and I just always rub it off but you don't have to. I just hate the feeling of dirty hands. And then I'm just gonna brush it and I do this with every layer. Sometimes I do it right at the beginning and just get it all done but I'm just gonna do it by layer this time. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna split it in half and I'm gonna take a chunk from the back, just a small section, just about like that. I'm gonna take my wand, it's on, it's hot, so I'm gonna be careful with it, and I'm going to put it like this, stick it straight down, and wrap my hair around it, going away from me. Just like that. Or I guess towards me, I did towards me on that one. It doesn't, sometimes it matters, for the back, I don't really care because the back is a bit harder to reach. And then I'm just gonna hold it on there for a few seconds. And then once it's done, I get this little loop and I'm just gonna flip it right back so that I know I've done that piece. Right there, that piece is done. Bam, flip it right back. And I'm just gonna do this one in two more sections. I'm gonna take this chunk right here, separate it, take my wand, and then I am, I guess I am wrapping it towards myself. Normally I would do away, but right now doing the back is a bit more difficult. And just hold it for a few seconds and then boop. Do it one more. 
okay if you drop it sometimes. I do it quite often. Um, just be careful when you get to this part to be mindful of your ear because you don't want to burn your ear. Bam. There. Now we have one little section done. So now we're going to move to the other side. And this side is a bit trickier for me. I have to hold my curling iron really weird. I have to hold it like this, still with my right hand, because I have no control whatsoever with my left hand when I do my hair. So if I did anything with my left hand to the right side of my head, I would end up burning myself. So it's whatever you feel comfortable, however you feel comfortable holding the wand. Um, I still like to take super small sections, just because it's easier for me, but this is how I have to do it. So I have to take it like this. And it's definitely an awkward position, but this is the way that works for me. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. And so then I'm just gonna section it off again. And then wrap it around, hold it for a few seconds, and then flip it back. And then do that one more, maybe two more times, but in some sections, like depending on how thick it is, depends on how long you need to hold your curl. I'm gonna redo this part right here though. Like if I had a way, oops, if I had a thicker piece, I would need to hold it on longer. If I had a super thin piece, if I held it on for a long time, obviously the hair is gonna burn. So this is one section done. So what you can do is you can stop here and hairspray all at the end, or you can hairspray in between each layer if you feel like that's gonna make it hold better. I'm gonna wait and do mine until the end, but if you want, you can stop here and do some hairspray. Okay, I'm gonna let it cool for a little bit. You can let it cool or you can just let your ends down. I'm going to go on to the next section, so I'm gonna part it up right here. We're gonna twist it. Take my claw clip, oops, and just, it's gonna look funny, but I'm just gonna pop it on right there. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna add some heat protector to this layer. And each layer you get, the more heat protector you're gonna need because you're gonna have more hair in each layer. So it's gonna get thicker as you go up. And don't be scared to put too much heat protector. It never hurts, but it hurts to not put enough. So always put more rather than not enough. And then I just do that again. Then I'm just gonna start about right, right here. And I'm gonna grab a chunk about that big and then I'm going to curl it. So I'm gonna put my wand facing down and I'm going to wrap it around and then I'm gonna hold it for a few seconds. And then boom, just like that, we got a little curl. And also the longer you hold it, sometimes they'll get tighter. So it depends on the size of your, the barrel on your wand though. Because if I hold this for a little bit longer, it will get a tiny bit tighter, but I don't want it to be quite that tight. And I just like a little loose curl like that. And then I'm just gonna keep going through until I get all of the hair on this layer on both the left and the right side. And you can get pretty close to uh, your scalp. Like you can get pretty close and you'll have your curl up higher or you can start lower and it will drop the curl. I like to do a mix of both so it doesn't look like a crisp line. And definitely make sure that you don't burn your fingertips because I've done that before. I've also burned my neck and it looked like I had a hickey for like two weeks, uh, but it was a really bad curling iron burn. And mine has this little piece right here. Sometimes I rest it on my head. Might not be the best thing to do, but sometimes it helps me when my arm gets tired if I can just like rest a tiny bit of it on my scalp just for a second. And sometimes my claw clip gets in the way. So at the end I have to go back in and these pieces but the more you do it I know I keep saying it but the more you do it the better you get at it and the easier it gets so I'm gonna redo this piece right here maybe at the end when this isn't in the way and then I'm just gonna start making my way to the back and I'm gonna do this side and this piece is a bit thicker so I'm gonna hold this piece for a little bit longer And I'm having trouble keeping some of the ends on the wand, which is okay. You can always go back and touch up the pieces. And you can see how awkward this angle is for me. It's okay if you have to curl it like that. It works just fine. But if you want, you can hold it 
like that and wrap it with your other hand. To do that, I would practice with the curling iron off before you turn it on. And then once you get confident with that, then I would turn on the curling iron and practice with heat on. But don't go straight in for it because you might end up burning yourself pretty bad. And then just make sure you go back and make sure there are no missing pieces. I missed some in the back, so I'm gonna have to come back here and go over them. This is a pretty thick chunk compared to the rest I've been doing, so I'm gonna hold this one for like 10 seconds. Okay, and then just make sure, I have another piece right here. And another piece right here. I did not do a very good job this time around. Normally I can get it pretty good in a first run through, but it's okay. Okay, looking pretty good to me. I don't really see any missing pieces. Let's check the back. Okay, now I am on to the last section, so we're just gonna drop that down. Light brush through the top layer only. Make sure you're only getting the top layer. You don't want to brush out those fresh curls. Take some more heat protector. Add that on top. And if there were a place to put the most heat protectant on, I would definitely say probably right in this section right here. Because you don't mess with up here as much and the ends, sometimes you leave them straight. But it uh, depends on how you want your curls, I guess. But don't be afraid to add too much. Okay, so I'm just gonna start right here about at the apex of my head, the peak of my head, the highest point, right about here at the back. And I'm just gonna curl it like I did the last layer, except for there is no claw clip in the way. This is just everything that's left. So this is a thicker chunk, so I'm gonna do about 10 seconds. And sometimes it's easy to section it from here, section the lower part from the curls compared to grabbing it up top. I kind of do a mix of both. That was close. Almost just burned my fingers. This is another thicker chunk. On the top section, I normally do a little bit thicker because it's easier to see what hair I'm getting. And it's also a lot easier to touch up because it's more visible and it's not as hidden and tucked away. If you have longer hair, I would probably suggest doing chunks like I'm doing right now, but I have shorter hair, so I feel like the smaller chunks of hair I do, the more they end up getting curled because I have shorter hair. I don't really know if that makes sense, but in my mind it does. I think longer hair definitely could be easier to curl because you have more to hold on to it, but it will definitely take longer. And I always like to section my front piece to be a little bit smaller so that I can get it a little bit more curly. So normally this, these two sections I'm doing right now would be one section, but I split it in half so that I could get more curl in my front piece, if that makes any sense. Okay, so I ran out of storage on my phone, so this part might be a little bit quick. So I finished curling it, and what you're gonna do is you're going to let it cool down for about 15 minutes. Do all your little touch-ups, make sure that it's the way you want it. And then after that, you're going to do hairspray, and then you're going to do a finger comb, and then you can fluff it out, whatever. But right now, I have to wait for mine to cool. I will be back once it's cool, and I will show you how to do the hairspray and the fluff. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes. I'm gonna take my hairspray and I'm just going to flip my head over and spray that just a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip it back and I'm going to lift it up right here and just put some in here, in the front, and then, and I don't wanna put too much because it's gonna get all sticky. And I'm gonna flip my head over and rub my fingers through. And the more you put on the back, like when you flip your head over, and the more you put down there, the more it will get tangled at the back of your head. So try not put as much down there. And this is what it looks like after hairspray and a fluff. I hope this helped and I hope you enjoyed and tune back in for more videos. There is the final result. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. I just watched that back and I realized I missed a piece. So, uh... Let me get that. Don't worry, I saw it. See, I fixed it.